Wonderful. So good morning. Uh, it's wonderful to celebrate Palm Sunday together. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Christ be with you. Hosanna to the Son of David, the King of Israel. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, during Lent, we have been preparing by works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. Today, we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the church throughout the world. Christ enters his own city to complete his work as our Saviour, to suffer, to die, and to rise again. Let us go with him in faith and love, so that united with him in his sufferings, we may share his risen life. If you would hold your palms. God, our, whose son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die, let these palms be for us signs of victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As the narrative from Luke's... After he up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. Departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord needs to Jesus. And after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, People kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, 
order your disciples to stop? He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. So let us go praising Jesus, our Messiah. You join me inside as we sing.
7.30 to 9, meeting here. If you'd like to come, please let me know this morning. Hopefully, it will be, will be good. Um, you don't have to come every time, and you don't have to prepare. Just come along and have some fellowship, an opportunity to share with each other, to study the Bible, and to pray. We're proposing to study the calling, the life and work of Peter using this book by Archbishop Stephen Cottrell called Come and See. So we hope you will come and see what Peter's life was all about. Yeah, it's wonderful, thank you. It looks like a fantastic book so I definitely recommend that to you. Um, you should have had your notices either by email or you might have picked them up at the back if you haven't already, then you can do that after the service. Um, I just want to bring to your attention um, the Easter services which we have during Holy Week and for Easter. So please do have a look at those and uh, come along to those um, as, uh, as works out for you. And, uh, but I do recommend that we do, so we've just sung God's praises. Uh, we've done the, the Hosanna of Palm Sunday. Um, it's worth doing the journey through Maundy Thursday and Good Friday and Holy Sunday before we come back and meet here uh, next Sunday. So whether you do that with us or in different ways by yourself, I do encourage you to make that journey. So let's prepare ourselves Take a pause before we pray this prayer of preparation as we come to meet with God, knowing that God loves to pour out grace in abundance. So we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ himself carried up our sins in his body to the tree, so that free from sins we might live for righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. Let us confess our sins. Cast your burden upon the Lord, and he will sustain you. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Cast us not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. Give us the joy of your saving help again, and sustain us with your life-giving spirit. Lord God, we have sinned against you and have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, the Father of mercies, has reconciled the world to himself through the death and resurrection of his Son, Jesus Christ, not counting our trespasses against us, but sending his Holy Spirit to shed abroad his love among us. By the ministry of reconciliation entrusted by Christ to his church, receive his pardon and his peace, to stand before him in his strength alone, this day and evermore. O oh God, you know my foolishness, and my sins are not hidden from you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let not the flood overwhelm me, nor the depths swallow me up. Let not the pit shut its mouth upon me. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. 
Hear me, O Lord, as your loving kindness is good. Turn to me as your compassion is great. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So it's time now for our children to go to their groups. Asha and Pat will wait for you at the back. And um, please do join them. Let me pray for you as you go. Loving God, we thank you for uh, all of us who meet here, young and old. And whether we remain here or learn about you in other spaces in this building, let us learn about you together and know you more deeply at the end of this day than at the in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, so please do remain seated for our first reading. Who's going to be reading our first reading? to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. The Sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I have not been rebellious, I have not turned away. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. Because the Sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore have I set my face like flint, and I know I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near, who then will bring charges against me? Let us face each other. Who is my accuser? Let him confront me. It is the Sovereign Lord who helps me. Who will condemn me? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, so I know that we normally stand for our gospel, but it's a long gospel reading this morning. And what I'm going to suggest is that you remain seated. Um, you might even like to close your eyes as you take in uh, the depth of the words which are being spoken in this gospel this morning. Hear the passion narrative of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Chapter to you, O Lord. Then the whole assembly rose and led him off to Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man subverting our nation. He opposes payment of taxes to Caesar and claims to be Messiah, a king. So Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. Then Pilate announced to the chief priests and the crowd, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But they insisted. He stirs up the people all over Judea by his teaching. He started in Galilee and has come all the way here. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. When he learned that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at this time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was greatly pleased, because for a long time he had wanted to see him. From what he had heard about him, he hoped to see him perform a sign of some sort. He plied him with many questions. But Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were standing there, vehemently accusing him. Then Herod and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him. Dressing him in an elegant robe, they sent him back to Pilate. That day Herod and Pilate became friends. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who is inciting the people to rebellion. I have examined him in your presence and have found no basis for your charges against him. 
neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. As you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and then release him. But the whole crowd shouted, Away with this man! Release Barabbas to us! Barabbas had been thrown into prison for an insurrection in the city and for murder. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again. But they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! For the third time he spoke to them, Why? What crime has this man committed? I have found in him no grounds for the death penalty. Therefore I will have him punished and then release him. But with loud shouts they insistently demanded that he be crucified, and their shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their demand. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for interaction and murder, the one they asked for, and surrendered Jesus to their will. As the soldiers led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the childless women, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if people do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said he saved others. Let him save himself, if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there heard insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. <coughs> Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun, sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness this sight 
saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. I'm going to concentrate on the reading we heard outside. We're going to have uh, opportunity again to reflect on the passion of the Lord during this week. So what I wanted to do was to uh, reflect on something that uh, came up while Jody was reading to us out on the steps the, about the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. We heard her say at one point in the reading, you will see a cult untie it and bring it here. So this morning, actually, I want to focus on the donkey and uh, the Jesus rides and what the donkey has to say to us. For today's Gospel reading, we're told that Jesus set his face towards Jerusalem, implying that Jesus knew the goal of his mission. We've just heard about it. Jesus is making his way towards the city mount from the Mount of Olives. It's a steep climb. Jerusalem is roughly just under uh, 4,000 feet above sea level. Jesus reaches the edge, knows that within a few days he'll be sharing the Passover with his friends, with his disciples, and then he knows what follows. The welcome he gets as he approaches is interesting. There is anticipation, joy, there's even celebration as he enters. It's fascinating how within a few days the same people would be among those who would cry out, as we've just heard, crucify him, call for his death. Before entering the city, Jesus, as we heard from Jody, he instructs two of his disciples to go into the village ahead and there they will find a colt tied up. Interestingly, we're not told the names of the two disciples uh, that he gives that task to. And I wonder why. They, why do they remain unnamed? Usually, when we read the Gospels, when a disciple is uh, told or invited by Jesus to go and do something, we're told who it is. But this time we're not. But in this situation, presumably, Luke has his reasons for not mentioning them. What do you think they might be? But little did those two disciples know that the assignment that's given to them would be so significant, critical to the whole Palm Sunday event. They go and find this colt. We don't know where, but they go and find it. It's tied up. We're not told who the owner is. It would appear the owner's response is one of willingness to let the colt go which I think would have been very unusual. It's interesting, I think, that again, we're not told who the owner of the cult is. His involvement, I presume it's him, is very short. Yet it is very significant to Jesus and the events of this day. 
I think there's something in that for us. We often think that when we get involved in things, we're going to be involved for quite a while. We love to be loved. We like to be wanted. It's interesting actually, I remember when I was a curate, um, we were preparing for Mass the next day on the Sunday. And on Saturday I was in the vestry getting everything ready, as, you're, as you do as a curate. And uh, there, was a, there was someone there who was uh, arranging flowers. And uh, we got talking. And I said, oh, how long have you been doing the flowers? How, how long have you been involved? And it was a woman. And uh, she said, um, well, I volunteered for six months about 40 years ago. <laughs> Christian ministries can be, but often they're not, brief. They often are unseen, unknown. It's the kind of thing that ambition struggles with within each of us. The contribution is important, nonetheless, and the owner of this cult is significant, but we have no idea who it was. It was seen that this cult is born to be ready for when Jesus needed it, and I think that's significant for the owner. The owner was ready, un unknowingly, for that moment when Jesus needed them. We're told that the cult had not been used by anybody. It was tied up. It needed to be set free so that Jesus could ride on it. For modern readers, it seems unlikely, perhaps surprising, uh, this, that Jesus uses this animal to ride into Jerusalem. Why a donkey? Well, donkeys in the Near East, in the ancient Near East, and even up to today in many ways, are vehicles for carrying heavy loads. We're not told that Jesus was obese, um, but they were used to carrying heavy loads. If they're lucky, they might be carrying children on beaches around this country these days. I remember being in Ethiopia a few years ago, uh, as you do. And um, I was in Addis Ababa, I was staying with, the, staying with the Anglican chaplaincy there, and I went to one of the high streets. And it was full of cars, yes. It was also full of mules, donkeys. These poor things were carrying mountainous loads on their backs. And they not only had that, they had a young boy, uh, it usually was, about 11, 12, 13, with a stick who would be hitting the backside of this animal to keep it going fast. I did wonder if the mule could speak and it turned round to the young person what it would say. Perhaps not printable for a church service on a Sunday. Donkeys weren't used to transporting monarchs, kings, or any other kind of ruler that usually was horses. But they were involved in ceremonial activities from time to time. Whereas rulers normally with their armies would uh, enter towns and cities on horseback, fully displaying their might and their power. Whereas donkeys were used as symbols of peace. That appears to be the intention of Jesus as he approaches Jerusalem. There's another reason for focusing on the donkey in the story that I'd like to highlight. As I stated at the beginning, after being instructed to find the colt, the disciples were told to go and untie it. Five times in the passage, references to tying are mentioned. It seems significant to the Gospel writer and therefore 
I think is important for us. I think it's important because it conveys a particular message. This animal clearly was meant for Jesus. It was tied up and it needed to be set free, untied. We've been hearing over the last few weeks about the story of Jesus at Bethany in the home of Mary, Martha and Lazarus. You remember he, Jesus is involved in raising Lazarus from the dead. We're told that when Jesus ushers, ushers the command, come out, Lazarus appears from the tomb. And then Jesus says to everybody else, what? Do you remember? It's a Sunday school question, really. <laughs> Untie him and let him go. Maybe, ever since the very beginning, the Lord has been saying that to set people free. And that's been the principal work of God Almighty down through the history of humankind up to today. Untie them and let them go. But Jesus also commands this about the cult. Untie it and bring it here. Maybe he intends that for the whole of creation as well. We're often tied, aren't we? We're tied down by many things. Concerns, responsibilities that we allow to weigh us down. Strong emotions that don't seem to leave us but are always there and have their grip on us come up from time to time and we realise that whatever it was which hasn't been resolved, it's still there. Memories from the past, things that have been said, particularly things that have been said to us. Things we've allowed to take control of us and to inhibit who we are. We can be tied down by many things. I wonder what may have tied or inhibited you over the years. Last Sunday, I was in another church in the Wilsdon area. And during my talk, I was speaking about some similar things to what I am now. And to illustrate this, I invited uh, a young woman, she was probably about 12 or 13, to come up and I brought with me a very long chain and I invited her to tie me up in this chain. I was talking about sin and its effects and what it does to us. And after she had uh, rather enjoyed tying me up, <laughs> I was standing like this. It was a, vis a visual for the people. And I was trying to say, this is what sin does to us as well. As well as the inhibitions, the messages from the past, the opinions of others, other things that we've allowed to tie us down. I spoke about that for a little while. And then I said, I declared to everybody, I need a saviour. And I looked, no one moved, interestingly. I looked at this young woman and I invited her to come and be my saviour. She untied me and set me free. I appreciated that very much. I was able to move again, to be myself as best I can. We need to be untied. We need to be set free, let go. To participate in being who we were made to be. Jesus says, interestingly, while he's walking in his ministry, 
I have come that you might have life and have it to the full. But we allow fear, being afraid, we allow the opinions of others to inhibit us, weigh us down. Jesus comes to set us free during the events of Holy Week so that we cannot be afraid to receive him and to share that love, joy and peace. Share the good news of Jesus Christ with others. We need to be untied the more that weighs us down. So, Palm Sunday is a celebration of Jesus the King, yes. It is also a celebration of Jesus as our emancipator, our liberator. During Lent, my discipline, during spiritual discipline during Lent, has been to read again and study the second book of the Bible, the book of Exodus. Reading again about the ancient Hebrews and the amazing work that God does in setting them free from slavery. One biblical scholar that I've used in my reflections suggests that we in the West, we in the First World Church, are good at talking about forgiveness, we're good at talking about healing, we're good at highlighting freedom. But there's one word that we don't use very much, and he says, he suggests it's very central to the Christian faith. And that is the word emancipation. How often do we use that word when we share the good news of Jesus Christ with others? He emancipates us from slavery, slavery to sin. Tested out during this week as Jody invited as we go through the story once again. We're invited to experience all that Jesus does in his work of emancipation, setting us free. Like the colt that Jesus rides on, we also are made with a purpose. We're, in, we're called to love God and to love each other. We can recover that purpose this week. We can be set free to do that. As I reflect on my own journey and also my experiences of being involved in the lives of people over many years, I've recognised very strongly the real life challenges that people have. The dysfunction and difficult situations that restrict and that bind us. When we are untied and live a life of faith, free from the pressures of trying to hold things, we experience what Jesus does for us at Easter. We can be free to praise God without hindrance. We can be set free. Palm Sunday is an occasion for us as well as to reflect on Jesus. What is it, we can ask ourselves, that needs to be untied in my life? What do I need to be set free from? Palm Sunday frees us to experience Holy Week in a way that does not hold us from truly singing the Hosannas and the Alleluias that will be here on Easter Day. As we enter Holy Week, sisters and brothers, let's look at what ties us down, what we could be set free from if we bring it to Jesus at the cross. The one who was tied on a cross for us so that he could be our saviour. God bless you as you journey through this week.
your wisdom um, and your French skills here. Um, I'm sure, as <laughs> I have received uh, from the words that Andrew has brought, I'm sure you too have as well. Please can I invite you to stand as we sing um, and as we ponder all these things in our hearts. No soul can shake my inmost son While to that rock I'm clinging Since love is Lord of heaven and earth How can I keep from singing? Through all the tumult and the I hear the music ringing It finds an echo in my soul How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost heart While to that rock I'm thinking
Shall we pray? And when I say, Lord, hear us, you respond, Lord, graciously hear us. <clears throat> Let us pray to the Father, who loved the world so much that he sent his only Son to give us life. Simon from Cyrene was forced to carry the cross for your son. Give us grace to lift heavy loads from those we meet and to stand with those condemned to die. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Your son watched the soldiers gamble to share his clothes. Transform the hearts of those who make profit from their victims and those whose hearts are hardened by their work. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. The thief who was crucified with Jesus was promised a place in your kingdom. Give pardon and hope, healing and peace to all who look death in the face. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord gracious, hear us. From the cross, Jesus entrusted Mary, his mother, and John, his disciples, to each other's care. Help us also to care for one another and fill our homes with the spirit of your love. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. In Mary and John, your son created a new family at the cross. Fill our relationships and those of new families today with mutual care and responsibility and give us a secure hope for the future. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. The centurion was astonished to see your glory in the crucified Messiah. Open the eyes of those who do not know you to see in your Son the meaning of life and death. Lord, hear us. Lord, us. Joseph of Arimathea came to take your son's body away. Give hope and faith to the dying and bereaved and gentleness to those who minister to them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Simon and Joseph, Mary and John, became part of your church in Jerusalem. Bring into your church today a varied company of people to walk with Christ in the way of his passion and to find their salvation in the victory of his cross. Lord of the Church, hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So please can I invite you to stand as we share Christ's peace with one another. As we share peace, we will do that uh, from our seats, but please do turn and greet one another. Once we were far off, but now in union with Christ Jesus, we have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood, for he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you. 
wonder of love and the power of prayer. Christ our Lord. 
For as the time of his passion and resurrection draws near, the whole world is called to acknowledge his hidden majesty. The power of the life-giving cross reveals the judgment that has come upon the world and the triumph of Christ crucified. He is the victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever, our advocate in heaven to plead our cause, exalting us there to join with angels and archangels, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Please do be seated. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Amen. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father.
Join in our final song. 